bonfire. Hey, I'm so sorry. I'm like, I feel like an old person with this Wi-Fi crack. <laughs> no I'm worries. Like, why is it taking me so long to freaking get on? I'm sorry. It's all good. Well, we appreciate you for uh, joining us on this. We're really excited about just the new music that you've put out and just your whole journey since, you know, releasing your debut EP almost two years ago. Thank you. No, I'm excited too. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I just want to get started here. Uh, the last we heard from you or saw from you, you were on tour with Fantasia, Tank, Robin Thicke. And, you know, a lot of people had great feedback and response to your performance. But when you were watching them on stage, you know, was there a moment that realized that you realized you're like, I got to get to that level? Um, well, first and foremost, let me say, like, just in general, my first tour being with like, literally what I consider a part of like the greats, like literally heavy hitters, all of mm -hmm. all of them are such phenomenal singers. And I grew up listening to them like Robin Thicke, Tank Fantasia, like, I love them all so much. I mean, vocally, so being able to go on a tour and that being my first tour with them was so incredible because even if they weren't teaching me something like I was learning like it was a constant like a learning process because you know let it be like their little tricks that they do before they go on stage like what they drink though their remedies you know what I'm saying how they handle the crowd like they're just incredible so it was it was dope for me to be able to you know be on that tour having that be right. my first tour I learned so much and I had such an amazing time. Tour life is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> <laughs> tour life is serious. I'm not even playing. Like, it's crazy. But I say all that to say, like, it was phenomenal. I wouldn't have had it any other way. Love it. Well, you've had an amazing couple of years here. Two number one hits on Urban AC. Album is out now. You were on tour. Just talk about how you're feeling and how you're soaking this all in right now. <laughs> Honestly, it's such a, it's a weird time, like, right now in the world, obviously, we're all, like, mm -hmm. in the house. Like, I, if you asked me last year um, how my, uh, my first album release was going to be and where I was going to be, I'd probably say somewhere hot and I was going to be, I don't know, on a beach somewhere celebrating, but <laughs> I'm not. I am currently in my room. <laughs> but I say all that to say, like, it's an so far i mean it hasn't been out my new album hasn't been out for for what 24 hours yet so it's it's just amazing like the feedback that i've been getting so far it's definitely a blessing and it's 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 overwhelming and you know with this um my ep was nerve-wracking but i was really nerve i was scared not scared what is the word that i want to use i was like it was overwhelming like because i mm -hmm. feel like your first album people your fans they remember your first album that is like yeah. like the holy grail your your first right. album you know what i'm saying so like there was a lot that went into this and there was a lot right. of emotion there was a lot of real you know real it's just very real for me so um it took a while but you know i formed the most beautiful baby <laughs> my <laughs> album is my baby you know what i mean so like i just hope that it reciprocates how like it did to me while making it you know I hope that you know this is music that my fans can really sink into and connect with and you know get them through you know so right. but it's it's amazing I mean I don't know it's kind of surreal like it's surreal having an album out you know and I did it um I'm not sure. Like, I did it in three chapters. So this is the first right. chapter out right now. Right. So there's still two more to go. But so far, so good. It feels good. It feels yeah. really good. I think what's really cool is I remember when your EP, your debut EP dropped, and no one knew who you were at the time. I think I just saw a comment. Someone thought you were a group, the bonfire. They thought that was a group. And then just seeing your, your, your progression in your career, um, you have had number one hits on radio. I don't think you've really you know, done anything on social media to like really do any like crazy trendy moments. You've just focused on the music. And I think that's really paid off. It, was that intentional on your part just to have people focus on the music? Um, Definitely. You know, it's, social media is so weird to me. It's so like, and it shouldn't be because, you know, it's 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 what it is it's what the world is today everything's focused on technology but i'm such a physical person like i'm such a mm -hmm. 
in the now like how do i explain it like i i like being face to face social media is so right. weird to me like a facetime call is so personal <laughs> like <Right. laughs> i don't know like it's just and but the beautiful thing about this and i will say that what i've learned being in this you know situation in the world right now with all this crazy stuff going on it's it gives us a us artists and us creatives a opportunity to really hone in on the um the rawness like it gives our fans right. the opportunity to really tap in like because obviously like i just said social media is weird to me and it's hard for me like it was hard for me getting used to being so open like yeah. and like sharing my world with everyone through a telephone you know right. or just like on live or whatever you know but it's always been it definitely has always been about the music and it always will be about the music it's what's most important and it wasn't even like that was my strategy it's just who right. i am as a person i'm very like that is what i want people to focus on of course i want to connect with my fans and you know really be intimate as far as like share my world with them but it's like it's number one i share my world through my music but 2020 i don't i'm online <laughs> i'm yeah. alive now it's not even you know it's through the music but it's like you know it's dope this this situation is it's a learning experience you know it gives you Absolutely. time to really connect right love it so let's talk about the album here first part of three that are set to come out i spoke to harmony couple of months back and he was raving about this project he said there were going to be some great vibes on there i checked out the album today love it um i feel like it reminds us of that feel good music and i'm not sure if that was the intention of what you were trying to do with that album but i feel like it brought us back to just listening to music and feeling good about it um just talk about splitting the album into three and what we're going to see on chapter one for those that haven't heard it yet so um it's so crazy because I originally didn't want to have three chapters. Like, I, I wanted to just put it out. But when I sat back and, like, thought about it, I was like, I hate, okay, how can I say it? I hate, like, microwavable music. I hate the fact mm -hmm. that, you know, obviously fans and people who listen and tune in, they're so eager for more. They want more. But, and as artists and creatives, sometimes we're always searching for the hit. Like, what's that next hit? Like, I got to keep going. I got to keep putting it out. But to me, it's like when you get in that that zone and that, like, constant where's the hit mode, it's like no one has the chance to really soak up that, that um, emotion, that what the music is. It's like it's not it's not about, like, what the hit is for me of course like i want hits i want number one records but right. it's about that feel it's about the emotion it's about the music it's about allowing my fans to really sink in and i felt like i don't see people doing three chapters i don't see people putting mm -hmm. um artists putting um an album out in three parts i just wanted to give i wanted to try something different and i wanted to give my fans a chance to really soak me in like if i yeah. put out an album you know people listen to it and it you you serve that all on a platter and you don't really have time to really soak because i mean honestly i'm keeping right. real when i listen to an album uh oh did we lose bonfire um, there one to 18. see if she's still there Oh, yeah, I'm still here. I was saying yeah. it, it's hard for me to digest the album that's like 18 songs or 16 songs. You know, it's it's hard to focus that way. So I really wanted to allow my fans to be able to focus in on these chapters and really understand where I was coming from and really like sink into it and connect with me, you know. So I felt putting out three chapters, each chapter has six songs it would allow them to do that and keep that anticipation, you know, and it'll feel like I'm giving you, which it's true, I'm giving you music every few weeks or so, you know what I mean? But it really right. is a whole album. So right. that was really the motive behind it. I really wanted to connect with my fans and have them, you know, give them a chance, like I said, to sink in to what I'm doing. Yeah, I think that's a great point because I think just, and I've noticed this too, just with myself, when it comes to streaming, it's so easy to stream. It's so easy to find music that I don't think anyone really has the attention span to listen 
to 12 songs on an album without just clicking skip 30 seconds into it. Exactly. That, I, and look, I'm not even going to stunt like I am not that person because I get, yeah. I like to focus on a few things and then that's yeah. it. Like, look, like I don't, I can't even remember the last album that I really like was like, okay, this is a no skip. This album yeah. is a no skip. You know what I mean? And not to discredit nobody, but it's like, it's the attention span. It's, no one can really focus and be like, okay, all 18 or all 16 songs, all 12 songs are my favorite. No, right. <laughs> it don't work like that. You got the <laughs> two songs that, or three, four songs that you rock with. And, you know, yeah. that's that was the most <clears throat> I just, I wanted to kind of create a different style of connection, you know? Right. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> so let's talk about chapter one here. The album title is obviously Love lust and let down is chapter one all about love or just how did you kind of break it down so um love lust and let downs each chapter i thought about doing it like one about love one about lust one about let downs because the whole album is about that but yeah. i just made a mashup you know because i didn't want to separate it because it is a full-length album i wanted everything to feel whole um right. so each chapter is a collective of those feelings and those emotions but um you know, love, lust, and letdowns represent relationships. And obviously, mm -hmm. I'm a woman. I'm, right. I love men. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for me, but it, it's, it's, it's not like, it's not just for women. I mean, it's for men, too. It's, it's for everyone who's felt pain, who's, who felt love, who's felt, you know, lust. Everybody goes through those things. So it's like, yeah. you know, everybody's got their heart broke. And everybody has fell in love. Everybody's been in lust. But for me, it represents, you know, being in love. Like, love represents love. You know, my current situation. I'm in a relationship, and I'm so in love. I've never had this feeling before. And it's just, it's a beautiful thing. And lust represents a, a man that's always around, that be in my DM, that just be popping up. <laughs> to me, like trying to just get in between, you know, what I got going on and he'd be backstage at my shows and he's just, you know, that temptation and let down mm. is, let down is the, the motherfucker who broke my heart. Let downs is right. the one that I'll ne is the man, you know, the man that I'll never forget that hurt me, that made me feel small and, you know, didn't allow me to be great or be my highest self. You know, it's just like, we all experience those emotions and um I named it that because that was my that's my real life experiences and I felt like right. everybody, man and female, can relate to that. And that's really what it's all about. It's it's about those experiences that we go through being in love, being in lust and shit, being let down. <laughs> right. <laughs> love you it. Know? <laughs> yeah. Now, kind of talk about your growth as an artist since the debut EP came out. Like, when I listen to this album, I feel like the sound is a, lo a little, I'm trying to use the right word. Like, the debut had some bright sounds to it, Ready to Love, Keeps Me Waiting. It was it was brighter. This one has a little more of a dark sound to it. I is that what you're trying to go for with this one? You know, I, honestly, creating it, I was in a very dark place. I was more so in the letdown stage. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that was that was what I was experiencing at the time. So I'd say maybe it feels that way because of that reason. And I was connecting to a lot of those, you know, bass lines and lower, mm -hmm. you know, that, that feel that, I don't know, I tend to gravitate towards the, how can I say it? I don't want to say slow songs, but I make everything into a damn R&B song. It could be a country song. It could be, <laughs> it could be a pop song. I'll hit the Casey and JoJo real quick. So I love, like, I love that. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I just, I love that tone. I love that that feel. But right. don't get me wrong. Like, I do. I have a lot of, I do on chapter two and three. Like, I have a lot of fun, bright, brighter songs. But <clears throat> I do have, I don't know. I think I might have mostly, I don't know. I think it's a happy yeah. medium. I, it may be right. feeling like that because of chapter one. But when it all comes together, it I think it's a a great mashup, a good collective of each each feeling. <laughs> but I definitely right. was in that zone. Like I was I was heartbroken, you know, when I first started creating mm -hmm. this um album. So shit, I, I really was about to create a whole 
heartbreak album because that's right. how I felt. <laughs> but you know, like music for me, it needs to come out ASAP because I could be a totally different girl a month a month from now. You could talk to me and yes. I'm gonna be in a whole different relationship or 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 just in a situation. You never know what life will bring you. You never know what God's plan is for you. And so mm -hmm. when I create music, it's it's kind of like it needs to come out now because this is what I'm going through now. And I can explain to you what happened to me years ago, but I could never give you the same detailed story of something that I'm going through currently in my life. You know what I mean? Right. So when it comes to my music, I like, I mean, shit, I love to put it out right away. And that's just what I was going through at the time, you know, and that's why this is called Love, Lust, and Letdowns because I fucked around and got in love. <laughs> 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 love it love it so with this album i checked the album credits and you're writing on a handful of songs on here was that something that Raphael sadiq and yancy kind of pushed you to to have you writing on records as well or did, did did you always want to be involved in the creative process um i'm honestly i've always been involved in the creative process but for my album i was really like tuned in like i wrote um co-wrote everything you know on my album so it's like mm -hmm. I worked with an, I didn't work with a huge team but the writers that I did work with they're so phenomenal and a lot of my songs they're a journey journal entries they came from right, right. from a journal so it was just a mm -hmm. matter of um you know being in a room with someone that can um tell my story just as as best as I can you know what I mean so I worked right. with um, a select few of really incredible writers and you know producers and um but definitely like I remember we had like me and Raphael and Yancey we had like a, a little camp you know when I first started creating this and we had just phenomenal um people come in and really create with me and it was just like a camp of just Beautiful, like if you could see colors in this room, it would be so beautiful. Right. Like it was just, I couldn't even describe to you how amazing it was, and it was just such a dope experience to really like lock in and and tune into like my spirit and my soul yeah. and those deep down core emotions that people can really grasp. And it was dope, you know. So I definitely say I was way more tuned in um, to this album and putting everything I had inside of me um, into it, you know. Nice. Now, Bombard, let's quickly go through the track list here. I want you to give me whatever you first thing that comes to mind when the, when I talk about these songs or how they were created. Um, the first one is you remind me with Wale. And I think Wale was a great feature because I think in another life, Wale would be an R&B artist. <laughs> he oh, just yeah. has that I history. Love him. Yeah. He's, first, first and foremost, let me just say I love Wale. He's super dope. Yeah. And um, I actually did a show with him before this song even came about. I did a show with him in New York and um you know, I didn't get to, um, we seen this, each other really quick. Like, I didn't even get to really talk to him because it was like a rush yeah. thing. So, you know, we seen each other real quick, talked for a second. And I just love him as an artist in general. So, um, what you remind me, I did the record and we sent it to Wale. Like, and I don't know, we sent it to a couple people, but yeah. I wasn't expecting him to come back so fast. And I was like, yo, I didn't even care about who else we sent it to well Wale like I heard his verse I just rock with it so hard I think he's a phenomenal yeah. artist I think he's so dope and you know <clears throat> it was a pleasure you know like I, I wouldn't change I wouldn't have that song any other way so right love it and then the next song we have is Talk To Me which I think Seven Streeter helped write on that one as well just talk about that song Mm -hmm. Talk to me is such a fun record. It makes me feel like um, <clears throat> I want to be in Miami with my girls, you know, in my mm -hmm. bathing suit, partying. It just makes you want to dance. Like every time I play it for somebody, they're dancing. So like, yeah. it just makes you, it's such a feel good record. And KP, um, he produced it and he's, he's, he's so dope. Like I love yeah. him. And we did a, a few records together <clears throat> on this album. So, you know, um, Talk to me is a, a fun girl like right it's some you know you want to dance to and sh it, it just it just gets people moving right <clears throat> and then the next record and this one really stood out to me i think it was just the vibe of this song new furniture <clears throat> that was a crazy record no furniture i have yeah that one is that was my letdown 
<laughs> that's <laughs> part of the let down motherfucker. Like, yeah, that was that was a tough one for me. Honestly, with that record, I didn't even been in because I was in a really toxic relationship, you know, right. that I came out of. So being having to dig into those emotions and creating that record, I didn't even want to give this person the time of day. Like I didn't even want to sing about this person because mm. you know I disliked him so much because he caused so right. much pain. But it's like pain creates amazing records and pain is real. Pain yeah. is everybody goes through pain regardless of what it is. And that's why music is I always say it's a universal language because everybody speaks it. Don't matter what you listen to, you're going to find a song that you connect with. You know what I mean? So New Furniture was very hard for me to write and hard for me to <laughs> sing about <laughs> because it was that it was my life. Like it was it was real. And that's what I was going through. And but I put my all into that record, like in the studio. It was it was crazy, like. I think I even shed a damn tear recording that record. Like it was, it was real. It was very realistic for me. So, um, right. yeah, new furniture is about you know a girl that's getting her shit together. She looking in the mirror and being like, "You are still that that bitch. You need to clean out the house, <laughs> okay? Get this stinking ass couch because it has y'all. You know, get get everything in the house that reminds you of this motherfucker and get it out because it's like everything <laughs> reminds." Everything, you're you're surrounding my world world right now, and I need a mm. revamp. I need to just take you out. So, new furniture was very real for me, and it was it's one of my favorite records on my album. Um, oh yeah, and I know the ladies gonna feel me on this one, <laughs> men too. But yeah. it's, it's it's for my ladies, you know. It is <laughs> for my ladies. <laughs> Love it. I know. I know. I'm not the only one who goes through that. I know. Right. Um, Right. Uh, the next record here is Pay Them No Mind. I felt this was a really cool vibe as well. Mm -hmm. Pay Them No Mind is, um, first and foremost, let me say, Andre 3000. I love him so much. He's been one of my favorites for since forever. Um, and Prototype, oh my gosh. Like, it was, that's one of the records that I was so, it was so nerve wracking for me to like touch because I had this thing where it's like, sometimes you just don't touch certain records like you leave mm -hmm. certain records alone and for me that was a part of my holy grail like I was like oh I can't like so when I heard the the beat I was like I fell in love with it obviously because I love that song but it's like I was like damn I can't do this in my head but then I started writing we started writing to it and I said yeah this shit is so fire like it's so hard <laughs> prototype and and not for nothing everybody's singing I know it's one thing to sing about heartbreak. It's one thing to see, sing about being in love. But I don't really hear a lot of songs about, you know, it's you and me. Like, if you're in a relationship, mm -hmm. like, I don't see nobody else. I don't care about nobody else. I don't care what, you know, my job title is. Like, I don't care that I be around everybody. Like, all I see is you. And, you know, right. you should be confident in that. You know what I mean? Tell me a significant other. Like, I got blinders on. Like, I don't see nobody else. All I see is you. So, um, Andre 3000 cleared it and <laughs> it was go time yeah. like I was so hyped you know it was it was just incredible for to to be able to recreate that record so yeah pro, or right. not prototype um yes prototype but yeah yeah that song is incredible yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh the next record of course is the single the number one hit you say in that song I'm assuming that's on the letdown portion of the album because that, that, that song, there's a lot to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yep. Definitely a letdown portion. Um, you say it's just, you know, it's about, it, and it's been out for a minute now. Like, you say it's been out for a minute, so a lot of people know that one, and hopefully they weren't like, oh, when they seen it on, they're like, probably feeling like I gypped them of a new song. But, you know, I had to put that one out first, so the next chapters could feel like super new you know but um you say you know it's about that song is for everybody i feel like because people really yeah. do say a lot of shit it's like they say a lot of things they just tell you what you want to hear and it's like okay cool but where where's the realness like okay you say you say so much but you never mean it like you know i'm i'm a i'm a very real person i'm very straight up and down like i'm very direct 
so I like people to be that way with me. Like, I don't like to be mm-hmm. on the bush. Like, if you're going to hurt my, fe- like, if you think it's going to hurt my feelings or, you know, don't sell me a dream. Like, be real. Be straight up with me because I'm very, I'm very that way. Like, I don't like, right. I don't like when people try to blame with me. So that's where, that's, yeah, that's that song. Because I just feel like in general, whether you're in a relationship or not, people do say so much and they never mean it. And it's just like, you know, people are genuine. <laughs> You know? <laughs> so I had to make a record for them people. <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. And then the last record, and I'm really excited to talk about this one last, because when I heard this, I felt like the record Can't Choose. That song oh. is amazing. And, and I think what I love most about it is that it reminds me of the music that we grew up listening to. It has a big 90s influence to it, which I know influenced you as well. Mm-hmm. And for you to put that spin on that record and – I think it just really came through as just a great record. Talk about that one. Thank you. First of all, Marky Basie, I love him. Like, I've always loved him. And um, when he, you know, I'm trying to remember. He's, he sent me this beat. Like, he sent me this beat. And then we never really, we didn't get in the studio together. But he sent me mm-hmm. the, he sent me the beat, whatever. And we started creating can't choose and like I never expected it to be what it is like I wasn't expecting it to sound the way it sounded and it's just like our voices together they're just butter like he's just Mm -hmm. I don't know like he just we complement each other so well and I loved doing that record with him and you know can't choose is about it's like following your heart like you really can't choose who you love like you can follow your mind which you should follow your mind but sometimes you you got to follow your heart that's what that's what that's where the love comes from is your heart your mind obviously tells you like come on you tripping don't do this don't do it you know (laughs) but nine times out of ten you follow your heart and you really can't choose who you love the heart goes the heart loves who the heart will always love you know what i'm saying so it's just about you know, love. I love to love. I'm, I'm, I'm like, literally, I don't know, I like to say I'm a hopeless romantic because I love to love. Like, I'm just loving. So <clears throat> we made that record together because it's real out here. Like, right. you know, <clears throat> with this world the way it is, it's a lot of people are so judgmental and a lot of people never, they don't focus on, you know, love, regardless of what the situation is. Um, <clears throat> I really wanted to send a message with this record because it's just like, it's a secret message. You know what I mean? Because like I said, everybody's so judgmental nowadays and everybody mm-hmm. likes to say and judge and, and, and talk about people. But it's like, you know, everybody's human. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, what nationality, like we all love, we all, we all make mistakes, we all love, we all do the same things, but we're human, you know what I mean, and you can't, you can't choose that, you know. Love it, yeah, absolutely, <clears throat> so Bonfire, we're out of time here, but I just want to again say that you delivered on this album, I can't wait for the next two parts, I think it's going to be great, mm-hmm. and uh, is there anything that you'd like to add? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just super excited to share these, this, you know, album with y'all, Thank you for supporting me and just continue to tune in. Stream my music a billion times a day. And (laughs) if you haven't (laughs) downloaded it already, you know, just continue to follow my journey, you know. And, um, yeah, hopefully we'll all get to be outside soon and stay safe out there. (laughs) But thank you. thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Well, Bonfire, keep putting out that great music. You know you've got our support. So just keep us posted and we'll always support. Thank you. All right. Take care. You too. Bye.